Robert Smith, and it was so rad. And um, there was one, at one point I was watching them play, and they played with And I, just, I honestly felt like I floated away and into outer space. And I want that feeling all the time. So I would say The Cure, 21 Pilots, and what was the other bully? That's my three. Yeah, and then I'd do Kenny G and Inya. <laughs> just to round it out. Uh, I mean, if, if we're if we're like shooting for the stars, that's right. I mean, I don't. The stars are great. Um, I mean, I love that. I, this I know that this is like kind of to some people things like a, it's like a cop out answer, but I love Radiohead. Yeah. And there, any day could come out the new record. Oh my yeah. gosh, I want to die. I'm so excited. Um, <laughs> What's your name? Where are you from? Uh, my name is Brittany Piacente. I'm the one that made you the Walking Dead Simpsons crossover shoes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you're the right size for Google didn't know. Um, my question is, if you were to categorize yourself as a 90s character, cartoon character, who would you be and why? Is it, um, I'm trying to, is it Lydia Dietz? Is it, wait, is it Lydia Dietz? Yeah, no, I wouldn't actually, no, I changed my mind. You know Doug Funny? So, do you know, um, I, I would want, um, what, what's her name? Judy, yeah. Yeah, I, she has more, short orange hair, shaved bits, and I like I literally it. was going to say Skeeter. You were? I promise. Yes! We can be in the same cartoon! I don't know I why. I a different cartoon character. Well, yeah. I think, okay, on the TV, I could see it. Quail Man. And I got so pumped. <laughs> who is Quail Man? Who, is Quail Man? who was it? Is Quail Man here? I, no, he's uh, I got really pumped. Uh, yeah, I, I think in my dreams I'd be Lydia Dees, but I'm not that gothic. It's just a dream. <laughs> right, what's your name? Where are you from? I'm Carol, and I'm from Brazil. Hey, Brazil! All right. My question is, what was the first impression you had of <laughs> I remember we hit it off, but man, it was bad. I don't want Taylor to tell you guys. It wasn't bad. I mean, just so, a, a, we met at a high school football and and uh, Zach and he was like, he'd been wanting us to be like, dude, Taylor, you gotta meet Haley. <laughs> I was like, cool. And, um, but she, she was like, you know, she's a trendsetter, right? She's very fashionable. We love the way she looks. We love it! Um, but at the time, she was doing a little DIY stuff. Yeah, back then, she's still doing it. But she took, like, fishnet pantyhose, and she, like, kind of draped around her. And, and I it cut was... the, the crotch out and put it over my head, and I had some fishnets. And, and that's maybe not that weird now, but, like, in our, like, little Christian private school realm, I was like... I was really <laughs> but she was awesome. Yeah, I remember that outfit. I was also wearing shades, you know, short pants. Capris. Like with suspenders. Oh man. Taylor, um, so t Taylor was, how old were you, 12 or 13? I was 12. Yeah, you were 12. Um, and Taylor had braces, and he, he and Zach both were like, you know, they had baby fat on them, and they just, we're really sweet, and Taylor's smile was always like this. <laughs> Which he still does in some pictures now, so when you see that, that's like OG Taylor face. And um, I just remember that um, his brother, Justin, was in a band that all of us kind of worshipped, and it was called Cecil. It's the only reason that I'm on stage right now. Honestly, and me too, to be to be fair. I was only cool to Josh and Zach because my brother was in Cecil. Otherwise, I would not be here. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so I just remember them telling me, like, oh, his brother's in Cecil, we really want him to be in the band. I was like, what do I do? What do I And so they just took me over to him and we hung out for a little bit. And then later on was like kind of what I was talking about last night. Later on we all met up at their house and we wrote songs together. So it was a really funny, ridiculous, a bunch of 12 year olds. 
year-old kids like meeting each other and being socially awkward situation. That was it. Thank you for that question. How you doing? What's your name? Where are you from? My name is Lauren from LA. It's my birthday today. Happy so birthday! Like I have a Civic shirt. Cool. I actually have my son here with me on the right shoulder, and uh, he's with me on the cruise. And uh, here's my question. Even though we're 29 years apart, we've seen many concerts together, ranging from older bands like ACDC to newer bands like Airborne. So our question to you is, did you attend any concerts with your parents? If so, who did you see? Did they influence your life or music? Well, mine's not as cool as ACDC. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's not as cool as ACDC. Well, I saw NSYNC when I was nine. <laughs> with my dad. <laughs> with my dad and um, and quickly, um, you know, pretended like I didn't see NSYNC two years later when I went to like, the Coldplay show and you were there too uh, with some friends. But yeah, I saw NSYNC was my first like big production concert of people that were just larger than life, you know? And I, I wouldn't say that they really... Dang it. I don't even like BSB as much. All right. So, but anyway, I, um, I I went to that that show, and I it, you know I don't think they influence our music at all, but I do think that seeing people you know create a show that big was just cool. It was like amazing to watch human beings do something that just felt like it was not real. At all. Um, okay, you're up. I wish I would have gone first. I'm sorry. Um, my dad. Uh, is in the music business and is the head of a Christian record label. So I grew up in Christian kind of vibe. So my, first, my first concert, uh, DC Talk. Yes! Yeah. So, and, then, yes. Uh, and then Michael W. Oh, yeah. But I remember it really well because like he, like he had like a long catwalk at the time and you know we had really good seats because my dad, you know, was a label. And, and he, he walked by us and he looked at me and gave me a thumbs up and winked. And I like lost my mind. I could not believe that Michael W. Smith gave me a thumbs up and winked at me. I didn't even know his music at all. It's just an amazing moment. Yeah, so and uh, that's had everything to do with art. Yeah. It has. That's awesome though, man. Good on you guys. Yeah, that's Father, rad. son, rock and roll. Passed it down to the generations, yeah. Yes. What's your name? Where are you from? Lorena, I'm from Miami, Florida. <laughs> What's one thing in your bucket list you haven't done and will make what you will make it happen this year? Uh, write a fifth record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, I wish I had gone first. No, I, uh, I want to swim with sharks. That, I can make that happen right now. <laughs> Let's go. All I want to do is see a shark. How many sharks are underneath us? So at least, at least seven. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, wait, what's your bucket list thing? I haven't thought about it. Ah, okay, all right, all right. Get back to us. Okay. All right, we got Yellow Ranger here. Oh, what's your Yellow name? Where are you from? Ranger. I'm Nicole, and first off, I just want to shout out to my students when you're in Pittsburgh yeah. to the Evangel Heights Christian Academy. Yeah. It was awesome. So thank you. You're welcome. Here's my question. Are the emotions you felt when you first write a song always the same or do they take on a new meaning as life happens? Is, is it ever hard to sing a song because of the emotions you first had? Yeah, um, it is. I think that maybe I mean record I think already you know that's only that's that's the the newest record we have and already I, I think we play those songs and I'm singing some of those words and I just envision completely different things in my mind than I did when the lyrics were sort of coming out and um, I don't know how it is for Taylor because I don't know I mean ta by the way you guys I didn't say this last don't, night I seriously but, don't no, say anything else Taylor, Taylor <laughs> does not get Half of half Stop. as much credit as he deserves for writing incredible music for the band. <laughs> insane. And I think that to me, like the reason it's so fun to write lyrics to what he what he writes is because it, it 
it's, I know it's music, and I don't know what it's like to write the, some of those parts and feel emotions when I'm writing musical parts, but I think that he does a great job of painting a picture before I even get to it. So, yeah, I mean, it changes all the time. And, uh, and sometimes it's very hard to get through songs. I had a rough time last night in a couple ones, and, and, um, but I think that's what makes it so beautiful, is that it's ever-changing, and everybody here probably envisions something completely different when they sing those words, so I love it. Yeah, I agree. I, I think there's songs that we play every single night, you know, and, uh, you know, I think like during rehearsals, you're like, why are we playing this? Like, this is it hurts insane. your hands. Yeah, you like, guys have heard this so many times, but the thing about live music is that every single night is it, it, a different feeling because there's different people and even, even like you guys, it's the same people for two shows, but we're all in different places and different head spaces and we're going through different things or, you know so to me it, it it does take on something new which is a lot of times why we play the same set list for a whole tour a lot of bands like new without you makes me so angry because they switch their set list every night and i'm like we suck like <laughs> but you know i think that every single night is different and it takes on something new and um I don't know, we, we love interacting with you guys, and whether you know it, you inspire us on stage, it kind of dictates what we do, so. Yeah, they, they do too. 